So, Windows users are in trouble. Okay, okay, might sound dramatic. But Windows 10 ends support in October 2025. That's in a few months. Huh? And given these ridiculous system requirements, a lot of computers are gonna be stuck on Windows 10. Now, I love Windows 10. It's perfectly functional. It's boring, but whatever. But it's probably gonna be a security nightmare after October. Anywho, anyone else heard of the Windows Monopoly? Hmm? Anyone? See, Windows has ruled the industry with an iron fist for over 40 years. Actually, 40 this year. With the only real competition being Mac OS, which I already use. But for x86, there are no alternatives. Or are there? See, Linux has made some serious strides when it comes to Windows software compatibility. And the only reason people don't use Linux is because of the software. So today, we're going to put Linux through the ultimate test. We're going to look at productivity, general speed, and of course, games. So you can decide whether it's time for you to switch. No, not that switch. So let's get down to brass tacks. How different are Windows and Linux? Well, the answer is very. Huh? Linux is actually far more similar to Mac OS. Well, first off, Linux is just a kernel off of which we have Puppy Linux, Steam OS, Ubuntu, and whatever. While the Windows kernel is NT. The main point being there's no reason for Windows apps to run smoothly on Linux, but somehow people have managed to do it. And by people, I mean Valve. Thanks, Valve. So what is our benchmark? Ding PC. We have an Intel Core i7-4960X from 2013. Yeah, yeah, I know it's super old, but it's a thousand dollar CPU from 2013. It's probably not competitive with modern CPUs, but still perfectly usable. We have 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a SATA SSD, and of course, a Titan X from 2015. It's like a monster PC from a decade ago. However, we are gonna upgrade it, so stay tuned for that. And of course, the CPU is not on Windows 11's official CPU support list. So we're gonna install Windows 11. Huh? It's actually as easy as checking this box on Rufus and that's it. Literally, it'll auto-install drivers and everything like it's fully supported. Windows 10 is Windows 10 and installing Linux, well, I checked the requirements. All right, made a bootable USB and just went through the installation process. You would assume it's only for experts or something, but no, it's perfectly simple. Next, I install Steam and all you gotta do is go into this menu and enable Proton and all your Windows games are perfectly functional. All right, so we got a little problem. This monitor and setup is only 1080p. And while that's all well and good, we're not cavemen. We need at least 4K. But the problem is this graphics card will not do so well in 4K. So we tested out a few games on Proton at 1080p with the Titan X. Which, yeah, they work fine. Except for Cyberpunk 2077, which didn't run because it doesn't meet the minimum system requirements. Yeah, the graphics card's old, I get it. However, the point was to show that it does work perfectly fine with NVIDIA graphics as well. And yeah, YouTube works, social media works, everything is perfectly usable. Okay, so I've realized we need to upgrade just a little bit. Just a little bit. Cause these graphics are from 2015. All right, so first up is a monitor, which will need at least 4K today. So I went on eBay and found this surprisingly cheap listing for $100. Sweet, I ordered it, it arrived, and yeah, it's 4K. Except for the scuff here, but whatever. It was a $350 monitor brand new in 2021. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this deal. But now we need a companion graphics card. Okay, so the new RTX 50 series is out of budget and also probably impossible to get. We need something that's 4K capable, supports ray tracing and AMD because we already tested the Nvidia side of things. And so I landed on this AMD RX 6700 XT. Okay, I know it says 1440p gaming, but I only have a 600 watt power supply and I don't have a lot of money. So I ordered it, it came in, I set it up, and yeah, it works just fine. Except of course drivers. Now I install drivers on Windows 10, and 11, and Linux, and it works just fine. Except AMD's Adrenaline software suite is not available on Linux. In fact, GeForce Experience is not available on Linux either. Might not sound like a big deal, but stuff like Shadowplay is super helpful. Okay, so now that we've upgraded, it's benchmark time. So let me explain the setup. We're gonna be benching different games on three different operating systems. Windows 11, which was installed by bypassing CPU and TPM requirements. Windows 10, which is the latest official supported Windows operating system. And Ubuntu 22.04, which will run games through Proton. All three are not screen recording, nor running complex software in the background. We're gonna use an external camera to record to avoid any performance hits. Now first up is Red Dead Redemption 2. Which on Ubuntu with these settings did an average of 42 FPS. If fluctuations weren't too bad, we could have capped at 30 FPS for a stable experience. So how did Windows 11 perform? Well, really terribly. With the same settings, Windows 11 did an average of 22 FPS. That was weird. I ran it a few times and double checked to make sure that the settings were the exact same. But yeah, I guess the Windows 11 overhead really shot the performance, cause on Windows 10, we did an average of 46 FPS, with little fluctuation between the maximum and minimum. Now importantly, we only did four extra frames on Windows 10 compared to Ubuntu, which isn't that much, and outperformed Windows 11 by a huge margin. So yeah, Windows 10 does take the crown here, but 
Barely. <laughs> Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. Very demanding, ray tracing and all that jazz, and on Ubuntu we did an average of 42 FPS, with a mixture of high settings and lows for the ray tracing. Now with the same settings on Windows 11, we did an average of 35 FPS. Wow, still losing. And on Windows 10 we did 40 FPS. So in this case Ubuntu takes the cake for a game that's not even native on Linux. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider was up next. Now I picked this game because despite being the oldest, it's the only one that has a native Linux port, which when I booted it up, it gave me this warning, so. I don't know how much this is gonna affect performance because we did an average of 59 FPS on the highest settings at 4K. That's pretty good. Now how about Windows 11? Well, with the same exact settings, we did an average of 44 FPS. At this point, I was genuinely wondering if the FPS was locked on Windows 11 or something. And just for final comparison, Windows 10 did an average of 55 FPS. So, Ubuntu actually wins. What the hell? Let's hop on over to Forza Horizon 5, which at 4K with medium settings, we did an average of 23 FPS. Which is not great, but on Windows 10, we did an average of 28 FPS, so the distance is not drastic. And in Windows 11, we did an average of 25 FPS, which again is worse than the Windows 10 performance, and I think the only time that it's outperformed Ubuntu so far. And finally, GTA 5 hovered around the mid 20s, and there were a lot of graphical glitches as you can see. On Windows 10, we're hovering around mid 40s to high 50s, which is a substantial improvement, and on Windows 11, we're hovering from high 30s to mid 40s. This game performs substantially worse on Linux but is the only black sheep. Okay, so I don't think either of us expected this. There's no way games on Ubuntu perform on par with Windows. And when it comes to general usability, Windows 11 was generally a pain in the ass. Like every goddamn time I shut it down, it had to download updates and shit. Not only that, but downloading the games took longer on Windows 11. I don't know why, but Ubuntu and Windows 10 were like two to three times faster downloading on the same network. Also, games across the board performed worse on Windows 11. Sometimes it beat Ubuntu, but it it was always substantially behind Windows 10. So it seems, especially in older hardware, if you have to bypass system requirements, don't use Windows 11 for gaming. When it comes to Ubuntu, is anyone else shocked as to how well it performed? It outperformed Windows 11 on almost every game, and the one game that was native Linux, it outperformed everyone. I genuinely didn't know that not only is Linux a viable option, but in some cases, a better option. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Anti-cheat is a common problem that Linux gamers will face, so if you play a lot of online games, you might not have such a great experience. But this ease of use only stays within Steam. Steam does all the technical work where you just hit install and the games work and that's it. But when it comes to games outside Steam, it starts getting challenging. Running GTA 5 was very complicated. Downloading Wine, then Lutris, then Rockstar Games Launcher, then troubleshooting different settings because it wouldn't work. And when it did work, it was very glitchy. Valve has made great strides to make Linux accessible to the general public, but it's still not perfect. Also, there's major apps missing like Adobe's Creative Cloud, which is one of the main reasons I still have to use Windows. So my final verdict? Definitely better than Windows 11 across the board, even when considering usability. It was still outperformed by Windows 10, but not by a lot. So I think Ubuntu is serious competition for Windows at this point, even surpassing it in some regards.